My invisible friends, hello and welcome back to our series on electrical engineering. Tonight it is about the ideal transformer, a tutorial, a recitation, not a lecture. In the beginning, we introduced the ideal transformer as a two-port network, a magic box with a number in it, N1 over N2. It doesn't matter what is the physical meaning of those two numbers, and this level it doesn't. Those are just two numbers that are divided to give us what is the ratio of the transformer. The point was that when we apply it on the port on the left, a voltage V1, with a polarity positive at the top, a voltage appeared on the other port, V2, also with a positive at the top. And they were related according to this formula, this ratio. V1 was to V2 as N1 was to N2. Also, when we feed a current to the port on the left, I1, that enters the ideal transformer on the top. Then on the other side, a current comes out of the top of the transformer, I2. And the ratio of those two currents is given as the inverse of N1 over N2. Another way of representing that ideal transformer could be this one, nothing different. The point now is that that close association suggested by that box is broken. In reality, in a circuit, we will connect the first port in one part of the circuit and the second port can be connected somewhere else in the circuit. We shall see that. So we need to break that close association. The voltages and currents are still related by the formulas that we saw before. But now we represent them rather like this. We suggest that we can move them apart. But observe, when the top of the left port is positive, the top of the right port is positive. When the current enters the top of the left port, the current is leaving the top of the right port. If we connect them somewhere else, how do we know which side is the top of each one of those two? By the way, we call the sides, the ports, we call them windings or coils for reasons that will become clear in the third year. And then we speak of the primary coil or the primary winding and the secondary coil or secondary winding. If we're going to connect those windings to different parts of the circuit, how do I know which side was up so that I know what is the relationship of polarities between V1 V2, I1, and I2. This is what engineers thought. Let's mark the top of each winding before we separate them, at least in the drawing. We put a dot on the top of the primary, we put a dot on the top of the secondary, and now we can say what is known as the dot convention. Where the dot is more positive, on the primary, the dot is more, more positive in the secondary. When the current enters the dot on one side, leaves the dot on the other side. Another symbol that is very popular for the ideal transformer is this one. We observe the two voltages V1, V2, and the two currents I1 and I2, and the dots are marking which side is up on the primary and on the secondary. Let's have a look at a numerical exercise. In this circuit, there is an ideal transformer with a primary here, what I labeled as HVS, the high voltage side, and LVS, the secondary, the low voltage side. They are related to one another by a ratio that we will investigate, all right? The voltage of the source is given by an RMS phaser 25 volts RMS, 35 degrees. And the ratio of the transformer in 1 over N2 is 9. The actual numbers in 1 and N2 are not important. They could be 90,000 and 10,000, or maybe only 90 and 10. It doesn't matter. I suggest that in a circuit, we treat each winding of an ideal transformer as if it were an ideal voltage source. That will simplify how you write equations. Also, I personally, I label the smaller of the voltages in the transformer. I give it a name and a known value. Which one? The one on the low voltage side. I also label the smaller of the transformer's currents. Which one? The one on the high voltage side is the smaller of the two currents. 
So here it goes. The voltage in the LVS, in the low voltage signs, in the secondary, will have that polarity. I give it a name, Vx, it's the molars of the one. But because the ratio is 9, automatically the voltage in the other sign will be 9 times Vx, and we'll have this polarity, plus on the top of the coil, plus on the dot of the coil. Now I go with the currents. The currents enter the top, that is, enter the dot, in the primary and port number one, so the current leaves the dot on the secondary, on the other port, like this. And the values, I give a name to the smaller of the two currents, which of course is the current on the HVS. I call that Ix. Automatically, because of the ratio, the current in the other coil will be 9Ix. We're almost ready. They are giving us what is the reference, what is node 1, so we choose node 2 and node 3. And next, you know what I'll do. Branch currents. Right. A, B, C, D. I'm labeling them with very, very short labels. Just letters. Because I will use them in a moment. What I'll do is solve this circuit using the emulator of the Hewlett-Packard Scientific Calculator, the HP Prime, which is free. You can go to the website of Hewlett-Packard and download that emulator for free for Windows, for iOS, for Linux, or Linux, as you call it. Paying a few coins, you can also download an emulator from an iPhone or an emulator from an Android. This one is free for Windows, which is the machine I'm working on. There. Define what is the phaser for the voltage source. If the calculator stores complex numbers in rectangular mode, but I want to enter that phaser, the voltage phaser of the source in polar form, 25 with 35 degrees. I use the function polar to rectangular, enter 2535. Polar to rectangular is a user written function, one that I wrote myself for my students. You write to me, I will share that function with you in a few days. Next, I tell the calculator how to compute the currents A, B, C, D. These are not equations, those are definitions. I'm telling the calculator, if you knew V2, compute A as V2 over 7. You compute B as V2 minus V1 over negative 10J, and so Now we write the equations. How many unknowns we have? We have V1, V2, V3, but we also have two more unknowns in this case. The transformers unknowns Vx and Ix. I need two more equations. Remember I told you to treat the coils, the windings of the ideal transformer, as if they were voltage sources. Well, write voltage source equations for them. KVL equation for node, the sign one for the primary, and that is V1 is 9Vx, and KVL um, for for the secondary is that V3 is the negative of the voltage source minus Vx. Five equations, five unknowns, we solve them. We solve those five equations for V1, V2, V3, Vx, and Ix. The calculator puts the answers in a vector inside a list in X, and now the next task is extract from that vector inside the list those values and put them in the proper variables v1, v2, v3, vx, and ix. The calculator now has the values of those five unknowns, formerly unknowns, now they are very much known variables, and it can compute any current that we ask of it. Let's do that. For instance, where is the RMS value of the voltage in the primary of that transformer? You say, well, that is the absolute value of 9Vx, that is 20.6 volts. What is the complex power absorbed by the primary of that transformer? Oh, that was, according to Steinmetz's formula, that was the voltage of the primary, 9Vx, multiplied by the conjugate of the current in the primary, Ix. That primary is absorbing negative 3.5 watts and positive 1.5 bars. So in reality, the primary is delivering active power 3.5 watts and it's absorbing reactive power 1.5.
It's just for fun I computed what is the power delivered, the complex power delivered by the secondary. And of course, it's exactly the same value. The transformer is ideal. As the last answer that I figured today, I would compute what is the, the value of the phasor of the current in the capacitor, B. B is stored in rectangular mode. I want that in polar so that I see the RMS value and the phase. So I use the user defined function rectangular to polar for B. If that current is 1.02 amperes RMS with a phase of 85 degrees. And that is all my students, my invisible friends. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you meet with me in our next video. If you like this video, show it. Click on like. That means a lot to me because that's telling me that today I helped another human being. Good night.